Hi, I'm the Space Quest Historian. About four years ago, I made a video called Doing Awful Things to Space Quest, about what would happen if you started shoving unsupported graphics drivers into the Space Quest games for shits and giggles, really. Since then, this has given rise to what we now colloquially refer to as the pain train, which in essence is the sadistic practice of intentionally downgrading these games to produce the ugliest, most hideous results imaginable. It even gave rise to a special subsection of my SQH Discord known as Digital Sadism, which specializes in these endeavors. Four years ago, our achievements were modest but encouraging. Space Quests 1, 2, and 3 already shipped with support for numerous quote-unquote inferior graphics adapters in their day, so at the time, we didn't feel the need to mess around with them too much. You can already run those games in four-color CGA or even monochrome Hercules mode without having to tinker around with their inner workings. And the most fun we had with these games was to intentionally misconfigure DOSBox to run them in the standard Cyan Magenta CGA palette instead of the intended brown and yellow and whatever mustard colored palette. Space Quest V also shipped with a driver that automatically downscaled the game's graphics to 16 color EGA, which was the extent of the horrors we could subject it to at the time, and Space Quest VI was so far out of our reach in terms of technological malpractice that the best we could do was just slap a 16 color DirectX shader on top of it and call it a day. Our proudest achievement at the time was the discovery that you could plop an unsupported CGA driver from King's Quest 4 into Space Quest 4 and have the game run in four color CGA, something it was obviously never meant to do. Unfortunately, since the King's Quest 4 driver didn't know how to handle the scrolling screen transitions in Space Quest 4, that meant that the game would crash every time you tried to exit a screen with one of those transitions, making it impossible to actually play the game from start to finish in this mode. Well, things have certainly changed since those innocent days. Four years ago, we were just dipping our toes into digital BDSM with a few whips and chains and ball gangs, but these days we've progressed to full-on Hellraiser levels of torture. So if you, like us, have the special affinity for untold depths of depravity, then join me down this trip to the Seven Circles. It's gonna get wild. We have such sights to show you. Let's stick with Space Quest 4 for the moment, because this is canonically where the digital sadism crowd took their first big plunge into the pit of degeneracy. Not long after the aforementioned four-year-old video of mine, SQH Discord Denison Pickle Dog took it upon himself to hack the King's Quest 4 driver and quote-unquote fix it so the game could be played from start to finish. This, I would say, was the watershed moment that sparked the imagination of numerous other digital sadists in our community. We now had a fully playable four-color version of Space Quest 4, and people began setting their sights on what else could be achieved by devious hacking. The only trouble with this particular CGA driver was that it only worked with the fairly rare 16-color EGA version of Space Quest 4. And I mentioned this a few times before, but if you didn't know, Sierra actually released separate EGA versions of their early VGA games, such as King's Quest 5, Space Quest 4, and the Space Quest 1 remake, and these were sold separately from their more well-known VGA versions. And the hacked CGA driver we're looking at right now only works with the special EGA version of the game because this version actually runs on a slightly older version of the internal game engine SCI, which makes it compatible with older graphics drivers from previous Sierra games. The VGA floppy disk and CD-ROM versions of Space Quest 4 use updated iterations of the SCI game engine, so if you wanted to play this cursed, four-colored bastardization of Space Quest 4 with Gary Owen's beautiful narration, you were shit out of luck. Until another SQH Discord denizen by the name of James Howard stepped in to rectify this injustice. He created a new graphics driver that works with both of these game versions, as well as many of the other Sierra games released in their VGA heydays. And as you can see, it produces a slightly different looking result than the other CGA driver, because this one is trying to interpret the far more advanced 256 colors of these releases, as opposed to the somewhat more manageable 16 colors of the EGA version. 16 colors, of course, being a lot closer to four colors than 256 colors. Yay, math. The good the news is that this driver also works with Space Quest V, so now we can experience the full glory of Captain Quirk's puked out pustule face as I'm sure God always intended. And as I mentioned, it also works with a handful of other Sierra VGA games such as Quest for Glory 3, Freddy Farkas Frontier Pharmacist, King's Quest V, and even King's Quest VI. 
The only minor inconvenience at the time of this recording is that the mouse cursor doesn't change when selecting a new icon. It's always the pointer, no matter what you've selected. But I think we can all agree that's a small price to pay for this majestic display of utter beauty we're currently beholding. But let's go back in time a bit to 1989 and have another look at Space Quest 3. Now, Space Quest 3 already gives us the option of running it in four color CGA, so mission accomplished, right? <laughs> well, not so fast. We also have this astonishing chunky pixel mode, which granted has way too many colors in it, but makes up for it by making the text completely illegible. I won't pretend to know exactly how this works, but from what was explained to me, this is actually a text mode driver that bypasses the game switching to graphics mode and instead uses an undocumented CGA mode which displays 100 characters of text per row instead of your standard 25. Now, I'll repeat this for the people in the back. This driver interrupts the game trying to switch to graphics mode and instead forces it to render all the graphics in text mode. Now, if you don't know how DOS works, let me try and explain this as best as I can. As you may have gathered by now, there's two modes. Graphics mode obviously displays graphics, yay. And text mode is used for stuff like the DOS prompt and edit programs. And there were games that used text mode, most famously ZZT, hi David Newton, because text mode does come with a wide array of symbols and other weird characters that you can use to create a, a semblance of graphics. But this is what text mode is supposed to look like. This is not what text mode is supposed to look like. Now, you may be thinking, ah, that's not too bad. You can still make out what's going on on screen. Well, let's take things a step further and go all the way back to Space Quests 1 and 2. If we disable the game's attempts to switch to graphics mode and instead force the games to render the graphics in text mode, we get this. This is by far the most unholy of creations we thus far have been able to accomplish. As you can see, the game is desperately trying to find characters within the text modes arsenal to try and replicate the graphics, and to be fair, it's doing its absolute best, but this is still nearly unplayable. Since the height and width of text mode is far less than what the graphics require, the end result is that the parser command line is all but entirely obscured, forcing you to enter commands blindly without being able to see what you're typing, and all the text in the dialog boxes and menu options are entirely invisible. So unless you know exactly what you're doing, this makes the game entirely impossible to complete. Not to mention that any semblance of precision movement just goes right out the window. If you thought the infamous root monster in Space Quest 2 was unfair, check this shit out. Uh, that's gonna be tricky. Maybe I just YOLO it. I made it. Ah, fuck. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you made it past the hard part, so yeah. <laughs> shit. And side note, Space Quest speedrunner Santa Claus actually took a crack at this and managed to do a flawless back and forth run without saves coming, but that man is a practitioner of the dark arts. But we can do even worse. In a final display of horrible sadism, this driver also works with later games in the series. So if we run Space Quest 4 in this mode, well, Good luck trying to read the time codes in the time pod because, well, you, you can't. And since these time codes are randomized with each new playthrough of the game, there is absolutely no way you'll make it past your first time pod, even if you know the solution to this game like the back of your hand. So, there you have it. A truly diabolical cavalcade of ways to make your Space Quest experience as cruel and unusual as possible. I hope you've enjoyed this sadistic display of visual cacophony, and if you have, then please join the Escuates Discord and have a look in our digital sadism channel to keep up with the latest developments from our digital BDSM dungeon. These were just a handful of examples of what these masters of the dark arts are capable of. There's lots more horrors to experience, so have a look in the video description for an invite link to the Discord, and while you're there, please have a look in my Patreon so you can support our ongoing efforts to ruin our childhood through the catastrophic misappropriation of technical prowess. I'm the Space Quest Historian, and until next time... Don't forget your safe words, kids, and I'll see you around the Chrono Stream. Bye!